Hello and welcome to this video looking back at the history of the American Hockey League. From humble beginnings, the American Hockey League has withstood some challenging times and many, many changes. Ultimately, it's embraced all the transitions and under some forward-thinking stewardship has now become an excellent place for players and staff to develop while putting together an enjoyable brand of hockey at a price that families can enjoy. This video will look into the league's origins, notable milestones, team and personal achievements, breaking down the history into palatable chunks. We'll begin by breaking it down into decades before turning our attention to more detail in recent history. The American Hockey League traces its origins directly to two predecessor professional leagues, the Canadian American Hockey League, the Can-Am League, founded in 1926, and the first International Hockey League, established in 1929. Due to both leagues losing teams, they merged in 1936 to create the International American Hockey League. The International would be dropped from the name in 1940, with Maurice Podoloff named the league's first president, a position he would hold for 16 years. The AHL began with eight teams. Those franchises were in Providence, New Haven, Philadelphia, Springfield, Syracuse, Pittsburgh, Cleveland and Buffalo. Note, all were American teams at this stage. It wasn't a glorious beginning for the AHL, as the Buffalo Bisons lasted just 11 games into the league's first campaign after their rink burned down, forcing them to suspend operations. The Syracuse Stars would capture the first Calder Cup Championship, defeating Philadelphia Ramblers in the final. In the second season, that being 1937-38, the legendary Fred Bun Cook earned the first of his seven Calder Cup titles as a head coach by leading the Providence Reds to the championship. The Hershey Bears joined the AHL in 1938, followed by the Indianapolis C Capitals in 1939. Another notable newcomer in 1939 is future Hall of Famer Eddie Shaw, an active player with the Boston Bruins who buys the Springfield Indians and manages to play for both teams. Philadelphia would be beaten finalists twice in the 1930s, losing 3-1 on each occasion. The Syracuse Stars became the Buffalo Bisons in 1940, with a new rink built to house the Bisons who lost their previous home to fire. Springfield were forced to suspend operations in the 1942-43 season because its arena is taken over by the United States Quartermaster for use during World War II. The aforementioned Eddie Shaw was busy in the 40s, moving his players to Buffalo and taking control of the franchise. He would then sever his partnership with Buffalo, operating a team in New Haven in 1945-46, before returning to Springfield in 1946-47. This decade was dominated by Cleveland and Buffalo, with each winning three Calder Cup championships. Barons won six divisional titles in all, contested five Calder Cup finals, and Cleveland Barons forward John Holotter became the first player in AHL history to score 50 or more goals when he netted 52 during the 1946-47 season. Hershey made the finals on a staggering five occasions, but won just once as the aforementioned Cleveland Barons dominated proceedings. The Philadelphia Ramblers became the Philadelphia Rockets, but failed to last even a season when introduced as an expansion team. The same was true for the Washington Lions, who eventually became the Cincinnati Mohawks. However, the league had expanded to a high of 11 teams by the time the decade had finished. The first Calder Cup of the 1950s was won by the Indianapolis Capitals. Led by future Hall of Fame goaltender Terry Sawchuk, the Capitals remained undefeated through the playoffs to claim their first ever Calder Cup championship. A young Johnny Bauer leads Cleveland to Calder Cup success the following season, and the goaltender would go on to win three consecutive AHL MVP awards prior to his NHL career. Eddie Shaw moves his Springfield team to Syracuse to the new Onondaga County War Memorial Arena, only to return to Springfield in 1954. The Rochester Americans joined as an expansion team in 1956 and promptly made it all the way to the Calder Cup Finals where they lost to Cleveland. The Barons would go on to claim four Calder Cup successes during the 1950s. Well-known names Tim Horton and Frank Mathers led Pittsburgh to the Calder Cup in 1952, before the latter moved to Hershey and helped the Bears win consecutive championships in 1958 and 59, 
The former, as we know, became a Toronto Maple Leafs legend and in business opened a certain coffee shop. The Springfield Indians became the Syracuse Warriors and then the Springfield Indians. The New Haven Eagles, formerly the Ramblers, Indianapolis Capitals, St. Louis Flyers and Pittsburgh Hornets all ceased operations, while the Cincinnati Mohawks transferred to the International Hockey League. The league fell from 10 teams to 6, but when the Quebec Aces joined the league as an expansion team in the fall of 1959, the AHL has its first Canadian-based team. The Springfield Indians dominate the opening years of the 1960s. They would win three consecutive Calder Cups, and star centre Bill Sweeney would win three straight AHL scoring titles. Two feats that have yet to be duplicated to this day. Pittsburgh returns to the American Hockey League in 1961, winning a Calder Cup in 1967 before the franchise leaves again to join the NHL in 1967. That win by the Pittsburgh Hornets denied Rochester Americans from winning four straight titles. The Americans' three Calder Cup championships were down to the success of players such as Al Arbor, Don Cherry and Jerry Cheevers leading the way on the ice. The Cleveland Barons won the last of their nine Calder Cup championships in 1964. Jack Riley becomes AHL president in 1964, but departs to run the Pittsburgh Penguins. His successor in the league office was Jack Butterfield, formerly general manager of the Springfield Indians, and he served the AHL until 1994. His name is now associated with the trophy awarded to the playoff MVP. Following the 1967-68 season, Fred Glover retired to take over as head coach of the NHL's Oakland Seals. At the time, Glover left the AHL as the league's all-time leader in games played, goals, assists and points, and with five Calder Cup championships to his credit. In 1969, under the direction of Montreal GM Sam Pollock, the Canadians become the first NHL team to buy an AHL franchise, naming them the Montreal Voyageurs, who join as an expansion team along with the Baltimore Clippers. The Springfield Indians renamed themselves as the Springfield Kings. And yes, Springfield renaming their teams is going to be a theme in this video. The Quebec Aces become the first Canadian team to reach the Calder Cup final and did so three times during the 1960s, but heartbreakingly lost on each occasion. Hershey continued to be a powerhouse, but proved successful in just one of four finals they contested. The 1970s was a tumultuous decade in the American Hockey League, with hockey expansion elsewhere putting a strain on the league and its battle to survive. All this despite things looking rosy, with the growth to 12 teams early in the decade. The Buffalo Bisons won their fifth and final Calder Cup in 1970, with a sweep of the Springfield Kings, then give way to the NHL's Buffalo Sabres, a sign of things to come in the AHL. The 1970-71 Springfield Kings, led by Butch Goring and Billy Smith, become the first team in league history to win the Calder Cup after posting a losing record during the regular season. Willie Marshall eclipsed Fred Glover's four major league records and retired as the AHL's all-time leading scorer in 1972. 523 goals, 852 assists and at 1,375 points in 1,205 games over 20 seasons. His records remain intact to this day. The Springfield Kings become the Indians again in 1974-75 and win another championship. The NHL expansion and the appearance and subsequent disappearance of the World Hockey Association played havoc and just six teams competed in the 1976-77 AHL campaign. This was due to half of the teams folding in the mid-70s due to the extra finances on offer elsewhere which the AHL simply couldn't compete with. The saddest result of this was that the Rhode Island Reds, formerly Providence, who were the last remaining uninterrupted franchise for the 1936-37 season and the oldest continuously operated minor league franchise in North America, had to cease operations after 51 years in Rhode Island. What helped reverse the trend was the downfall of the NAHL, the ultimate demise of the WHA and the decision of the NHL's Philadelphia Flyers to return to the league as a team owner. Under the guidance of President Jack Butterfield, the AHL would rebound, adding franchises in Portland, Binghamton, Philadelphia, Hampton Roads, Moncton, Glens Falls and Syracuse, 
during the last three years of the decade. The Maine Mariners, new affiliate of Philadelphia, won the Calder Cup in 1978 and 79, becoming the only AHL team in the history of the league to win the title in each of its first two seasons. The Montreal Voyageurs became Nova Scotia and they would win back-to-back -back titles in 1976 and 77. And with the Montreal Canadiens winning consecutive Stanley Cups, it marks the first two times an organisation captures the Calder and Stanley Cups in the same season. The American Hockey League continued to trend in the right direction regarding growth during the 1980s, but the turnover of teams continued apace. The Moncton Alpines, Nova Scotia Oilers, Fredericton Express, all joined as expansion teams, along with the new Maine Mariners, as the original Maine Mariners became the Utica Devils. The dormant Boston Braves become the Moncton Hawks. The Erie Blades merged with the Baltimore Skipjacks, with the teams having transferred from the Eastern Hockey League and Atlantic Coast Hockey League, respectively. The Philadelphia Firebirds become the Syracuse Firebirds, and the Binghamton Dusters change name to the Binghamton Whalers. The New Brunswick Hawks become the St. Catherine Saints before eventually changing to the New Market Saints. The Nova Scotia Voyageurs become the Sherbrooke Canadians, the Nova Scotia Oilers become the Cape Breton Oilers, and the Fridgerton Express become the Halifax Citadels. The Syracuse Firebirds and the Sherbrooke Jets both cease operations. Back on the ice and the 1980-81 campaign, the Adirondack Red Wings win the Calder Cup in just their second season. They would close out the decade with a third championship in nine years, along the way becoming only the second team in AHL history to raise a 0-3 deficit to win a best of seven playoff series. Under head coach Mike Keenan, Rochester defeats Maine for the 1983 Calder Cup. A year later, Maine defeats Rochester for the Calder Cup, giving the Mariners three championships in their first seven seasons. The Sherbrooke Canadians captured the 1985 title behind a certain 19-year-old rookie goaltender named Patrick Waugh. Brett Hull announces his arrival in the AHL with Bonkton in 1987, scoring 50 goals and winning the Dudley Red Garrett Award as the AHL's top rookie. The AHL has been a breeding ground for trying out new things, and the shootout was introduced for the 1986-87 season to break ties. The Hershey Bears win twice during the decade, but their second championship in 1988 was notable for the fact they remained unbeaten, sweeping all opponents to post a perfect 12-0 record en route to hoisting the Calder Cup. 18 franchises changed names and or moved location through the 1990s. Nine expansion teams were formed, including the Capital District Islanders, Hamilton Canucks, Springfield Falcons, Baltimore Bandits, Carolina Monarchs, Kentucky Thoroughblades, Philadelphia Phantoms, the Lowlock Monsters, and the Louisville Panthers. Ceasing operation were the Moncton Hawks, the Adirondack Red Wings, Beast of New Haven, the Prince Edward Island Senators, and the Cornwall Aces. The latter would resume operations as the Wilkesbury Scranton Penguins. After 28 years as league president, Jack Butterfield retires from the position and is replaced by David Andrews, who was the general manager of the 1993 champions, the Cape Breton Oilers. Those Oilers were indebted to Bill McDougall, who absolutely obliterated Calder Cup records by posting 26 goals and 52 points in just 16 playoff games. The Springfield Indians went back-to-back championships, first as the affiliate of the New York Islanders in 1990, and then as the Hartford Whalers affiliate in 1991, defeating Rochester Americans on each occasion. Speaking of the Americans, they would make five appearances in the Calder Cup final during the 1990s, but win just one championship in 1996. Adirondack would win its fourth Calder Cup in 1992, defeating the first year St John's Maple Leafs in a memorable seven games final series in which the road team won every game. The Binghamton Rangers established an AHL record with 124 points in the regular season, posting a record of 57, 13 and 10, in 1992-93. Hockey returned to Portland in 1993 and the Portland Pirates would win the Calder Cup in their first season behind playoff MVP Olaf Kolzig. Other returning fixtures included the AHL All-Star Game in 1994-95, the first such event in 35 years. In 1995 the AHL is aligned into four divisions and two conferences for the first time and teams received a point for an overtime loss a policy later adopted by the NHL.
The AHL would test a 4-on-4 format in regular season overtime, which would become a standard heading into the new millennium. Under rookie head coach Peter Laviolette, the Providence Bruins mastered an incredible 70-point turnaround in the 1998-99 season, winning 56 games in the regular season and capturing the Calder Cup. That was just one season removed from a 1954-7 record. The turn of the millennium would witness the greatest changes of the American Hockey League's history. This would result in unprecedented growth, especially on the West Coast. There'd be more uniformity with NHL teams taking either full or partial control of their affiliates. The result was more stability that would hold the league in better stead. The Norfolk Admirals, based in Virginia, joined the AHL as an expansion team, taking the league's number to 20 teams. The San Antonio Rampage also joined as an expansion team. The Hartford Wolfpack, who moved into Connecticut's capital when the NHL Whalers departed in 1997, captured the city's first ever pro hockey championship in 2000. John Paddock was the man at the helm for Hartford and became the first head coach to win Calder Cups with three different teams, having previously won with the Maine Mariners and Hershey Bears. A year later, the St. John Flames captured the Calder Cup bringing the title back to Canada for the first time since 1993. The Flames would only last another two years, but would resume operations as the Omaha Axar Ben Knights in 2007. The team would then relocate to Maline in Illinois, playing as the Quad City Flames, but this failed to last and the franchise would move on to Abbotsford, BC. There were a plethora of other changes, including the following. Both the Utah Grizzlies and the Cincinnati Mighty Ducks would suspend operations, and the dormant franchises would be placed elsewhere. Utah were relocated to Cleveland, Ohio as the Lake Erie Monsters, and Cincinnati are relocated to Rockford, Illinois as the Rockford Ice Hogs. The Toronto Roadrunners split from the Hamilton Bulldogs and moved to become the Edmonton Roadrunners. The Edmonton Roadrunners didn't last long and resumed operations as the Oklahoma City Barons. The St. John's Maple Leafs moved from Newfoundland to Toronto to become the Toronto Marlies one of the first moves orchestrated by the NHL team to have their affiliate closer to home. The Prince Edward Island Senators franchise resumes operations as the Binghamton Senators. The Louisville Panthers resume operations as the Iowa Stars. The Iowa Stars are then renamed the Iowa Chops, and the Anaheim Ducks have replaced the Dallas Stars as the team's NHL affiliate. The Worcester Ice Cats are on the move to Illinois to become the Peoria Rivermen. The Lowlock Monsters are purchased by the New Jersey Devils and renamed the Low Devils. The Cleveland Barons name was revived in 2001 when the San Jose Sharks purchased their AHL affiliates, the Kentucky Thoroughblades, and relocated them to Cleveland, where they would play at the arena which was owned and operated by Sharks owners George and Gordon Gund. However, in 2006, Cleveland are relocated to Worcester, Massachusetts and renamed the Worcester Sharks. In 2001, the AHL's membership jumped dramatically to 27 teams, mostly due to the absorption of six teams. Milwaukee, Chicago, Houston, Utah, Manitoba and Grand Rapids joined from the International Hockey League, which ceased operations due to financial difficulties. An incredibly competitive 2001-02 regular season ends with the top 17 teams separated by just 12 points. The Chicago Wolves, who finished 16th overall in the regular season standings, capture the Calder Cup in their first season in the American Hockey League. Boosted by a dual affiliation with Montreal and Edmonton, the Hamilton Bulldogs dominate the 2002-03 regular season, winning 49 games and amassing 110 points. They would be derailed by the Houston Aeros in a classic seven-game final series. In 2003-04, a record number of shutouts, 210, highlights the year of the goaltender. Hartford goaltender Jason LaBarbera claims the Les Cunningham Award as the AHL's MVP. Milwaukee finishes first overall in the regular season and then captures the Calder Cup with a convincing sweep of Wilkes-Barre Scranton to claim the first championship in franchise history. The NHL's lockout of 2004-05 provides the AHL with some of the best young talent it's seen. Jason Spetzer is a leading scorer as he racks up 117 points for Binghamton, while Rochester goaltender Ryan Miller becomes the first AHL netminder to win 40 games in a single season for four decades. The shootout is reintroduced to decide a winner of games tied after overtime. Due to the NHL lockout, 
the ad show experiences its largest numbers ever at the gate, with more than 7.1 million fans attending games throughout North America, including several games in NHL arenas. Philadelphia, which sets an AHL record with a 17-game winning streak early in the season, sweeps Chicago to win the Calder Cup championship, clinching the title before 20,103 fans, then the second largest crowd in AHL history. The American Hockey League would celebrate its 70th anniversary in 2005-06. That season, Wilkes-Barre Scranton storms out to the best start in league history by earning a point in its first 23 games of the season. A record of 20 wins, 0 losses, 2 overtime losses and 1 shootout loss. Hershey, who missed the playoffs the previous two seasons, captures its record tying ninth Calder Cup win with a 6 game victory over Milwaukee in the finals. The Hershey Bears look set to repeat as champions in 2007 with a league best 114 points during the regular season. Also having a superb season with the Chicago Wolves with Darren Haydar setting an AHL record by recording a point in 39 consecutive games while his teammate Brett Sterling scores 55 goals, the most by an AHL rookie in 16 years. Hershey and Chicago would taste playoff defeat at the hand of the Hamilton Bulldogs and a certain Kerry Price who replicates Patrick Wah's feat from 22 years earlier and leads Montreal affiliate to a Calder Cup championship as a 19-year-old goaltender, fresh out of junior hockey. Chicago will bounce back the following year to win the 2008 Calder Cup, which is their second championship. Wolves forward Jason Krog becomes just the third player to lead the AHL in goals, assists and points in the same season and then duplicate defeat in the playoffs. After leading Hershey to back-to-back -back finals appearances, Bruce Boudreau is promoted by the Washington Capitals in mid-season and will go on to capture the Jack Adams Award as the NHL's Coach of the Year. The Hershey Bears reached the Calder Cup Finals for the third time in four years in 2009 and finally recorded their 10th championship with a six-game series victory against Manitoba. Bears forward Alexandre Giroux sets a league record by scoring a goal in 15 straight games and winds up as the fifth AHL player to ever score 60 goals in a season. Head coach Dan Bleismer is promoted from the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins in February and leads the Pittsburgh Penguins to the Stanley Cup. The Pittsburgh Penguins affiliate in Wilkes-Barre Scranton would reach the Calder Cup Finals on three occasions in this decade, but will come out on the losing side on each occasion. From 2009 up until the present day, the AHL has continued to evolve into what we now know in 2022. But going back to the 2009-2010 season, the Hamilton Bulldogs and the Toronto Marlies were invited to participate in a four-team pre-season tournament in Edinburgh, Scotland to celebrate Scotland's contribution to the game of hockey. The Edinburgh Capitals, Scotland's only elite ice hockey team at that time, hosted the tournament from September the 24th to the 27th, 2009. The Bulldogs and the Marlies played the Edinburgh Capitals and the Belfast Giants in order to win the Gardner Cup. Hamilton would defeat Toronto in the final to claim the Gardner Cup and amongst their number was a certain prospect called P.K. Subban. Changes for this season would include the Philadelphia Phantoms relocating to Glen Falls, New York due to the Wachovia Spectrum being demolished in the fall of 2009. They would become the Adirondack Phantoms. The Texas Stars joined the fray for the 2009-10 season with limited membership but were fully integrated the following year after Tom Hicks, owner of the Dallas Stars, bought out the Iowa Chops franchise, which had been dormant having not met league regulations. The first of our outdoor game in AHL history was played as the Syracuse Crunch drew a league record 21,508 fans to the New York State Fairgrounds for a meeting with the Binghamton Senators. The Hershey Bears set records with 60 victories and a 24-game home winning streak during the regular season. In the playoffs, the first year Texas Stars reached the finals but fall to the Hershey Bears as the Bears became the first AHL repeat champions since 1991. In 2010, the Lau Devils became the Albany Devils and the Albany River Rats became the Charlotte Checkers. The Dorman Edmonton Roadrunners were reactivated and moved to Oklahoma City as the Barons and the sixth incarnation as the Edmonton Oilers affiliate. The Hartford Wolfpack were renamed the Connecticut Whale on November the 27th, 2010. 
the Wixbridge Ranton Penguins would cruise through the 2010-11 regular season with 58 wins, but they wouldn't win the cup. The Binghamton Senators qualify for the players via the crossover as the fifth place team in the East Division and would earn a historic first round win over Manchester, raising a 1-3 deficit by taking each of the final three games of that series in overtime. The Sens would go on to eliminate Portland, Charlotte and Houston to earn their first championship in 29 seasons of AHL hockey in Broome County. Changes were afoot in 2011-12. The season was extended for a week and the total number of games for each team was reduced from 80 to 76. The league moved from having four divisions of seven or eight teams to six even divisions of five teams, similar to that of the NHL at the time. The Western Conference consists of the West, Midwest and North Divisions. The Eastern Conference consists of the Atlantic, Northeast and East Divisions. As a result of the Manitoba Moose relocating to St John's, they have switched to the Eastern Conference at that time, while the Charlotte Checkers moved to the Western Conference. The first round of the playoffs was switched to a best of five series, but the following rounds would continue to be best of seven game series. The Adirondack Phantoms and Hershey Bears would play an outdoor game at Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia and more than double the AHL single game attendance record when 45,653 fans watched the game. That wasn't the only outdoor game hosted in the AHL that season. Hamilton hosted Toronto outside at Ivor Wynn Stadium before the largest crowd ever to watch AHL hockey in Canada. The Norfolk Admirals put together one of the greatest seasons in their AHL history in 2011-12, garnering headlines around the world with their professional hockey record 28-game winning streak. Norfolk's Corey Conacher claimed both MVP and top rookie honours, and the Admirals would win their first Calder Cup with a 15-3 playoff record, sweeping Toronto in the finals. 2012-13 would see an influx of the top talent due to the NHL lockout. Abbotsford's Barry Brust will break Johnny Bauer's 55-year-old record for the longest shutout streak, 249 minutes and 51 seconds, set during the 1957-58 season. Following an affiliation switch to Syracuse, Tampa Bay's top prospects make a second consecutive trip to the Calder Cup Finals. However, on this occasion, they would lose in the final to the Grand Rapids Griffins, who would win their first ever Calder Cup Championship. In 2013-14, the Houston Aeros are relocated to Des Moines, Iowa and become the Iowa Wild, but remain affiliated to the Minnesota Wild. The franchise previously known as the Peoria Rivermen relocated to Utica, New York and changed their name to the Comets. Travis Moran would earn both regular season and playoff MVP honours and win both scoring titles as the Texas Stars finish with the best record in the league before capturing the first Calder Cup. In franchise history. In 2014-15 some more rules were adopted and adapted. A new overtime format that includes time being played at three on three. Overtime was extended to seven minutes following the first whistle beyond the first three minutes both teams have reduced further from four to three men on the ice. Shootout switched to the NHL format of three skaters per side. In team movement, the Adirondack Phantoms are relocated to Allentown, Pennsylvania to play as the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. The Phantoms would sell out 22 games in their first season in Allentown. The Abbotsford Heat relocated to Glens Falls, New York after the city of Abbotsford terminated their lease agreement with the Calgary Flames. The team became the Adirondack Flames and played out of the Civic Centre. The Syracuse Crunch set an all-time attendance record for an indoor pro hockey game in the USA as 30,715 fans watched their game at the Carrier Dome. Wolfsby Scranton rookie Matt Murray set several records during the 2014-15 season, including the longest shutout streak ever by an AHL goaltender, 304 minutes and 11 seconds. The Utica Comets make the Calder Cup Finals in just their second season, they would lose to the Manchester Monarchs in what turned out to be the Monarchs last year as an AHL club. In 2015, the formation of the Pacific Division brings wide sweeping changes to the league. The Manchester Monarchs become the Ontario Reign. The Norfolk Admirals become the San Diego Goals. The Worcester Sharks become the San Jose Barracuda. The Oklahoma City Barons become the Bakersfield Condors. And the Adirondack Flames become the Stockton Heat. Joining those five teams in the brand new Pacific Division 
were the existing Texas Stars and San Antonio Rampage. The five California teams would each play a 68-game schedule. The other 25 teams, including the two Texas-based teams that share the Pacific Division with the California teams, would play 76 games each. The implementation of an unbalanced format was seen as a cost-cutting exercise for the Pacific-based teams. Playoff positions would be determined by points percentage. In support of the new division, the NHL played an outdoor game called the Golden State Hockey Rush at Rally Field in West Sacramento, California. That was on December the 18th, 2015. The Stockton Heat defeated the Bakersfield Condors 3-2 in front of 9,357 fans. Other changes that year included the Hamilton Bulldogs becoming the St. John's Ice Caps, whilst the previous St. John's Ice Caps became the newest incarnation of the Manitoba Moose. Two long-standing league AHL records would fall in the 2015-16 season. San Jose's Roy Summer passed Bung Cook to become the winningest head coach in AHL history, whilst Rockford goaltender Michael Layton surpassed Johnny Bowers' mark for career shutouts. Ontario netminder Puta Budai wins 42 games, the most by an AHL goalie in 55 years. He led the league that year in wins, goals against average, save percentage and shutouts. The AHL's 80th anniversary season ended with the Lake Erie Monsters, completing a 15-2 postseason run with a sweep of the Hershey Bears to bring the Calder Cup to Cleveland for the first time since 1964. In 2016, the Tucson Roadrunners were added to the one-year-old Pacific Division, as the Arizona organization purchased their AHL affiliate in Springfield and moved it west. Similar to the season scheduling in the previous season, the five California-based teams plus the new Tucson team continue to play a 68-game season, while the rest of the AHL teams play 76 games. The Portland Pirates franchise was purchased by Springfield Hockey LLC and relocated to Springfield, Massachusetts to become the Springfield Thunderbirds. The Lake Erie Monsters rebrand as the Cleveland Monsters. An important rule change was brought in regarding fighting. To prevent stage fights, any player involved in a fight prior to or immediately after a face-off will be given a game misconduct, which results in the player being ejected from the game. If a player accumulates 10 fighting major penalties, the player will be suspended for one game following the 10th penalty, and then suspended for one game after each subsequent fighting major penalty. If a player accumulates 14 fighting majors, the number of games suspended increases to 2 for each subsequent fighting major. Accumulated fighting majors do not include instances where the opposing player was assessed an instigator penalty. It was a big move for a league that was often known for being that where enforcers could ply their trade. For the second time in five seasons, the Grand Rapids Griffins defeated the Syracuse Crunch in six games to capture the Calder Cup. In 2017, the Binghamton Senators were purchased by their parent club, the Ottawa Senators, and relocated to Belleville, Ontario as the Belleville Senators. The Albany Devils would become the Binghamton Devils. The Montreal Canadiens AHL franchise, then operating as the St. John Icecaps, was relocated to the Montreal suburb of Laval, Quebec as the Laval Rocket. The AHL's longest game in its history occurred on May 9th, 2018. Phantoms forward Alex Krishnevsky scored the game-winning goal at the 6.48 mark of the fifth overtime period, while goaltender Alex Leon contributed a Herculean effort, turning aside 94 of the 95 shots he faced, to backstop his team, Lehigh, to a 2-1 victory. The game would eventually finish at 1.09am. The Toronto Marlies set the pace that season from start to finish. They led the league with 54 wins and 112 points during the 2017-18 regular season, before outlasting Texas in the first seven-game Calder Cup final series since 2003. In 2018-19, the Colorado Eagles joined the league as an expansion team, taking a number of teams to 31. Team 32 was then in the works with the news of an NHL expansion team in Seattle. The Seattle Ownership Group filed for an expansion team in the AHL based in Palm Springs, California. The Charlotte Checkers clinched the regular season title and then captured their first Calder Cup with a five-game victory over Chicago in the finals. It would be three years until another team would lift the Calder Cup. The 2019-20 season was one of bad news. In February 2020, the San Antonio Rampage franchise was bought by the NHL's Vegas Golden Knights, with the news made public to a devastated fan base in Texas. On March 12, 2020, 
Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the season is abruptly suspended. The campaign is officially cancelled on May the 11th, marking the first time in 84 years that the Calder Cup will not be awarded. On June 30th, David Andrews retires as President and CEO, succeeded by Scott Howson. In NHL news, the Tampa Bay's Lightning success that season makes John Cooper just the 8th head coach to win both the Stanley Cup and Calder Cup titles. The 2020-21 season is delayed as the pandemic continues, finally getting underway in February of 2021, with 28 teams participating with abbreviated schedules of varying lengths. With fans unable to attend games, several teams operate out of practice facilities or their NHL affiliates rinks, including Montreal, Ottawa and Calgary. The Vegas Golden Knights affiliate is named the Henderson Silver Knights and finish atop the Pacific Division during the regular season. There will be no Calder Cup playoffs, although the Pacific Division decide to hold their own mini post-season series, with fans allowed back in venues. There was yet more movement for the 2021-22 season. The Vancouver Canucks relocated their franchise from Utica to Abbotsford, becoming the unoriginally named Abbotsford Canucks. In a concurrent move, the New Jersey Devils opted to switch their AHL affiliate from Binghamton to Utica, keeping the Comets name. Owing to a combination of an overloaded Western Conference featuring nine teams in the Pacific Division and a need to make more money, the AHL decided to extend the playoff format. 23 of the 31 teams qualify for postseason play, with points percentage still in operation. The Chicago Wolves blitzed the regular season, racking up 110 points and a 724 points percentage. The Wolves went on to lift the Calder Cup, losing just four postseason games in the process. And so we get to the current season. So for 2022-23, the Stockton Heat were relocated from California to Canada, becoming the Calgary Wranglers. The Coachella Valley Firebirds expansion franchise began life as the 32nd AHL team and as an affiliate of Seattle. All teams are to play a 72-game regular season schedule, the first time since the Pacific Division was formed that the league had parity in that regard. And that wraps up the history of the American Hockey League from start to finish. I hope you enjoyed the video and if so please leave a like. If there's something you think should have been included or anything else about the league you think warrants a mention please leave a comment below and if you'd like more type of this content please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.